Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox, and I'd like to welcome you to the Daily Compliance News. The Daily Compliance News is an offering of the Compliance Podcast Network. September 17th, 2019, the Tax Return Subpoenaed Edition. In this episode, we start with our lead story, our title story, rather, the Manhattan District Attorney has subpoenaed Trump tax returns. New York City prosecutors have subpoenaed President Trump's tax returns for the prior eight years. They are related to hush money paid to the porn actress Stormy Daniels. They've been subpoenaed by Trump's accountants, Mazars USA, and it's both business and personal tax returns. So it looks like uh, Trump's attempt to hide his tax returns is going to fall at some point. It's unclear when that will be, but uh, things seem to be moving in that direction. And then uh, all heck may break loose. Uh, In a very disturbing article uh, in Washington Post, a whistleblower filed a complaint with the intelligence inspector general. That inspector general deemed it credible and related uh, the matter of urgent concern, that's a statutory classification, to the Director of National Intelligence as required by law. This happened back on August 12th, and the Director of National Intelligence had seven days before he turned it over to Congress by law. The Director of National Intelligence has refused to do so, uh, clearly in a violation of law. And uh, now um, the House Intelligence Committee Chair Adam Schiff is threatening to subpoena the disclosure, and he's told the acting director of national intelligence, once again, Trump can't seem to get a real director in there um, because he won't appoint one, but it's um, if the acting director does not comply with his statutory duty by today, the committee will require him to show up and explain why. Um, this is a clear violation of law and puts the uh, director of national intelligence clearly in a very difficult position. Uh, Next up, from the Wall Street Journal, yesterday or earlier we talked about the Boeing board looking at the safety process which allowed the 737 MAX to become approved. Well, now a panel of international air safety regulators is finishing a report expected to criticize the U.S. process for 737 MAX jets, according to people. It's... uh, part of a dozen findings <clears throat> where the task force was called poised to call out the FAA for its lack of clarity and transparency in the way the FAA delegated authority to the plane maker to assess the safety of its uh, flight control features. Frankly, if you uh, delegate authority to uh, a manufacturer, they're going to utilize that authority. The upshot, according to the uh, proposed findings, is that the essential design changes didn't receive adequate FAA attention. Uh, Unfortunately, there is a lot of blame to go around in the uh, 737 MAX fiasco, and the FAA is part of that. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see if we can actually get some regulatory reform under this administration. And finally, uh, from the New York Times, over the weekend was, I think most people are aware, two major Saudi oil installations were hit by drone strikes. These were not missile strikes, but these were drone strikes. And so for the compliance practitioner listening to this podcast, I would ask you to think about what's risk? What's risk within your organization? Obviously, if you've been around an oil refinery, you know you have lots of open Uh, space because you have to flare off lots of noxious and toxic gases. And that's just in the refining process. That's to refine crude oil down to a plastic or gasoline product. What is the risk you have in your operations from a drone strike? Once again, this is not a missile strike. So how could a terrorist or any other organization infiltrate a facility and cause major damage and major disruption to your supply line? Mike Volkoff and I are back for another episode of Why a Duck, where we take a deep dive into the Antitrust Division new corporate compliance program. Check it out.